and Bishop, and we're, you've been walking in the whole 10 years. We're, so. Bishop, we're so excited to have you. I wanted to share, guys, about Bishop Wellington Boone. Number one, many of you have asked, who is our bishop? Who is our apostle? You know, who is our covering? Bishop Wellington Boone, you know, our skin color might be a little bit different, but he is our bishop. You, Nino is in the chat here tonight. Um, when people ask us who's our covering, we give them Bishop Wellington Boone's number, okay? I know a lot of people are afraid to, to call him because uh, they don't they don't want to mess with him. We tell them, if you want to mess with us, you got to mess with him. So before you get to us, you got to get through him. And so he's been our bishop. He's been our covering. Um, we met, we really met nine years ago at Morningstar. I was preaching at Morningstar. He's on the board of many churches, many colleges he's on the board for. And he came up to us after after we were done preaching and he said you belong with me you're, you're my same spirit my same tribe and so we've been we've been his son ever since and he's just a man of God we've had him at our revival we've had him at our awakening when he was with us and Bishop I told you this last night on the phone and uh, my team's in the chat so I want you guys to let us know you know this is true after Bishop got done teaching that what he's gonna be sharing on especially tonight on eternity my team was lined up to say, where did this guy come from? Why have we never heard this? This is just break, groundbreaking. This is the Holy Spirit download. And Bishop, yes. to this day, my team still talks about the night that you were with us. And so you rocked us. Um, you changed yeah. us. I could go on stories, guys, of him, me and Nino staying up till two o'clock in the morning. Me and Bishop <laughs> and Nino have stayed up many nights till two in the morning, revelating as we call it. Bishop has so yeah. much wisdom. There's no time limit tonight, Bishop. I would love for you to, you know, you can intro yourself. You can share whatever you want to share. Um, Nino just said in the chat, this is Big Papa. Absolutely. This is our Big Papa. This is our Bishop here. Um, I wanted to have you on sooner bishop but i knew that god wanted to build up the platform before we had you on because i want the maximum amount of people to hear the message tonight and so bishop i just want to say from me and from nico um we love you bishop you're our spiritual father you're nino spiritual father yep. you're a covering and we appreciate you everything you've done for us so many guys so many pr churches i've preached at these big churches you've seen I've been there because Bishop has recommended me. I've had countless churches call me and bring me to come speak because Bishop recommended me. And so Bishop, yeah. I am forever grateful from all that you've done for us, from what you've continued to do. And uh, the platform is yours, Bishop, wherever you want to take it. We're excited to have you tonight. Thank you, bro. Thank you so much for that amazing introduction. And I'll tell you what, you're not just looking for a revival or a revival. And it's been that way the whole time. I mean, this is, mm. that's the truth. And we all know it, and those who listen to you know it, that you, God's carrying, put something inside of you that is eternal. And when people listen to you, the flesh is broken. Mm. The natural is overcome and defeated. And they, they get brought into a dimension of the reality of God that, is, that becomes their reality. Wow. Something about what God's given you breaks religion. And it brings people into a, a place where they say that that's the truth. And, and then it brings conviction. I said, look, they want to repent. They don't feel like he's condemning me. They feel like, wow, I've been found. Mm. And in being located, they give their lives over to God mm -hmm. and they become something they never were. Wow. And I thank the Lord for you. I mean, so I was just crescendoing the obvious from the time God's hand was on you. And yes. It is my amazing privilege to tell everybody about you I can. Mm. And because God's, God, God's hand is on you, you've accepted it. You've withstood, you know, the challenges that are out there and people that don't see you in the spirit. Mm. But at the same time, I remember where people were asking you to come to other countries and you came to me and you said, should I? And then I said, well, not right now. You're, God is reviving this country. Mm. But I understand why God's reviving this country, because of the influence of fact that is still unfulfilled for the country. So while mm. some people are criticizing the millennials and saying, what's wrong with them? Wow. Well, then they, they got to look at you and say, who you're looking at isn't what God is doing. Wow. They, wow. they have to look the way wow. that God is working in your life. They, and it's undeniable. It's just undeniable. So for a person like me in the 70s, um, this gives me comfort that if God tarries, the fire is going to still burn. Come on, Bishop. That brother of yours over there, sons of thunder, Come both on. of you are. That brother over <laughs> there, he's been setting fires. And so that's what you guys do. You're on fire. 
So you're setting fires. Mm. And there's no joking around. So you guys are a great family. I've been there amongst your people, of course. Uh, your wife, fam all of them. Your uncle, all of them. Mm. They're going for it. And so I thank God for you. So I know also that you're not intimidated by any of the circumstances that are going on right today on. because you have a destiny. Mm. And you're not going to die. You're not getting no virus. And you know, <laughs> your family's not going to get it. Nobody's going to get it. Come on, Bishop. And because you're on assignment. And when God is finished with you, you're, you and I are the same way in, th in this sense. I'll be glad to go to heaven. Come on, Bishop. If he's finished, not afraid of death. Death is a portal into the eternal dimension. There's nothing negative about death. Come on, Bishop. Unless you die without God. That's the negative right there. And so what we should be afraid of isn't the coronavirus. What we should be afraid of is an unrepentant heart. Wow. And not being in a place where we're satisfying yeah. heaven. Because we've not only been born again, now we've been formed into the kind of person that's suitable for the next world. And this life, this whole life is a temporary life. I mean... The body, our physical bodies here, my flesh and blood, it, it's not suitable for what I have become in God and you either. That's why the thing, sometimes it gets tired. Come on. It wears out. It needs sleep. Sometimes, you know, the devil attacks it and it tries to get sick and all these kinds of things. And the basic reason is the eternal you, there is no sickness there. Wow. And in that world that you've been born into, this body only carries you for a season. And in this season, you're getting ready for the forever realm. Wow. And so you have eternal life. So that means you're not going to die. The only issue is placement, where you're going to be in the next world. Mm -hmm. And the Bible has a lot to say about that. And everybody listening to me, the issue is formation. See? So first, revelation. You get the call of God on your life or you get born again. The next issue is formation. You're not in shape. In other words, to the degree that God has formed you is the degree that you can be affected. And that's Romans 8, 29. Whom he did foreknow, then he also did predestinate. That's the destiny of God for you, to be conformed to the image of his son. Listen, you're not going to die as long as your heart is tender for God until you're formed into the image of that's going to allow you to occupy your position in the next world. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So, and Jesus is making that body for you right now. Matter of fact, let me just go to just for a minute. Just come yeah. here with me for yes, a minute. Yes. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Yes. Just look with this. You, this is, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've read it, but look what it says. I'm reading in the New Living Translation. For we know that when this earthly tent we live in is taken down, that is, when we die, and leave this earthly body, we will have a house in heaven, an eternal body made for us by God himself and not by a human hand. Wow. I mean, this is amazing. So the first God that made Adam's physical body, mm -hmm. and that's what it says in, in Genesis 2, and God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his breasts, breath, nostrils, the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So he became an eternal being manifested with skin on. Wow. He wasn't, he wasn't, or he wasn't created to die. And the truth of the matter is, you don't actually die. This body wears out, but that's because of the fall. If there was no mm -hmm. fall, there would be no death. Sin, when it's conceived, brings forth death. Adam sinned, mm -hmm. God told him, You you disobey me, you, you're dead man. And that is separation from God. The degree to which all these things that are happening, like the coronavirus and all these things about dying, the degree to which you are afraid of that is the issue of your separation from God. Wow. The Whoa. vitality of your communion with God in the closet of prayer is your confidence. Mm. Counterfeit prayer, counterfeit relationship with God, you then have to turn to something else. Well, what else? What, the oh doctors? God. Come on, Bishop. You can see that. They don't know what they're doing. They don't, they don't really know what this is. People are guessing all over the place.
but the one that's not guessing is God. Wow. And you are oh. born of God. So you're not going to die. So let, let's just say, though, what? Because I, I got sons that got it. They got the virus, got over it. I mean, I'm, Bruce is probably listening to me right now. He, he's down with his mama separate, uh, celebrating her 95th birthday down in New Orleans. Mm. And they go to a, a, you know, a very nice restaurant, Ruth Chris. I don't know if that's where it happened, but the w numbers of them who went there, he gets it. Mama gets it. His sisters, two of his sisters get it. They got it. They got it. Their mama went to ICU. I mean, she went wow. to, look, 95 years old. But what Bruce called me up, we decreed over her life. That's not the way she's going to die. She's not going to die. God raised her up out of there, and she's now home. Come on. 95. So, yeah, yo, the old people get it. Old people, no. The issue of longevity is the issue of destiny. Mm. You're mm. not going to die in your commitment to God until the purpose that God made you for is fulfilled. Wow. If God lets you die, that simply means his will get, doesn't get done it, through your life. God did not make anybody to waste your life because the life you have is God's life. Wow. You are made as an exceptional being who are not only have an assignment on the earth, you're being formed on this earth, but your, your life span relates to your assignment. So now you wow. think that, just for a minute, bear with me for a minute. So you yeah. think that, uh, you, you go to church, right? So God says, forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together. So you go to church, you're serving God. He says, I inhabit the praises of my people, where two or three are gathered together in my name, they're mine in the midst. So God is going to let you go to church, get the coronavirus, and die serving him. Wow. That's nonsense. You, you're not going to die. It's a be safe, the safest place you can be is in the place of obedience to the will of God. Come on, Bishop. And he says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word endures forever. So the thing that you got to have in your life is a proceeding word. Wow. You, you look, for example, okay, so God gives the Great Commission. I'm looking at that now. Matthew, uh, just for a minute, just go to Mark for a minute. Just, just look there with me, just for a minute. If you have Bibles with me, Yes. Out there online, or you, you know, use your phone. I don't care, but look, go there with me for a minute. It says in Mark 16, 14, so still later, told them about Jesus. He appeared to the 11 disciples. So there are 11 disciples he appeared to, right? And as they were eating together, he rebuked them for their stubborn unbelief because they refused to believe those who had seen him after he had been raised from the dead. So now you can say he was dealing with knuckleheads. I mean, he, these were his disciples. He said, no, 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 you're not operating at the level because I already told you I was going to be raised from the dead. Wow. And so instead of saying, I need to affirm you, God loves you, Come on, God's Bishop. grace is upon you, he didn't do none of that. He adjusted them according to the level of their calling. Wow. So that when he gives them their assignment, they are brought up to date with how he sees them. And then he oh says to them, God. go into all the world and preach the gospel. Now, I'd rather read this out of the, the King James right here, because I kind of like the way it said. I'm probably used to it, but I just like it. And look what he says. And he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And the Bible, watch. And he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall what? Come on. Cast they shall cast demons. out devils. Come on. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servants. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Mm, wow. But if you listen to the contemporary conversation, put some gloves on. Come on, Bishop. Because what's going to happen then, the, this message, this great this great commandment, this commission that God gave his disciples is negated by the coronavirus, huh? Wow. So you lay hands on the people with the, with the virus, instead of they getting well, you're going to get sick. Come on. So in other words, he says, you lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The way that they're saying it in the conversation of the world is, lay hands on the sick and you'll get what they got. 
Wow. That's nonsense. Wow. You, you are on the solution side. You're not going to die. Come on. I mean, I could go there to Acts and the snake, or as, they were, as he was on his way to fulfill the assignment, bit him. They thought he was going to die. He was poisoned. He should have died in the flesh. Took that shake, snake off of him. Come on, Because why? That Come anointing on. was a protective covering on the man's life. His assignment was the issue of his life. Man. Now, he was going to die a martyr, but he had to give in to death. Wow. Death wasn't going to defeat him. Why? There's no death in the believer. There's no death in the sinner either. You're going you're gonna to live forever. The only issue is where. Wow. See? Wow. That's, what I'm telling, that's what I'm saying. We got to stop, like what Isaiah is saying, the counterfeit Christianity. Mm. So the, the whole structure of the church, the way we see it, is not going to return to like it was. Come on, Bishop. But Come let's on. just say it does. Let's say it returns to like it was then guess what? You got what you got. Mm. The revival, which in both continents of Europe and the continent of America, there, is, there are no revivals going on in those two continents. Wow. And so what you have are remnants of moves of God and, 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 and men who are, are, are sanctified by God doing the will of God, but it's not broadly, broadly spread. Why? Because there's so much retrograde wow. in the kingdom of God. And so now the proof that there is a cowardly spirit that the devil has put out is what happened when the virus, I mean, a virus shut down the Great Commission. You mean what God said? Look, let me read this again Come to on, you. Bishop. Watch. So good. Come on. And he that believeth shall be, back, shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. So that he's talking to the disciples, did he ever say the signs were going to stop? Mm. Let me just say this. The same thing I said about Isaiah as a walking revival. This is exactly what Jesus was in the earth. It was Emmanuel. There was never mm. a time he was cold. He was oh. always hot to do his father's will. Come on. He said to these disciples, these signs are going to follow you. He could have, he, the, the verb tense is present perfect tense. You mean you'll never not be in revival. Wow. The commandment to disciples to do what these were called to do means you're always carrying the fire. Come on, Bishop. And, and, you, and that means, look, every missionary that goes out, they don't go out into places where they say, I just can't wait for you to come. They're going, they were going into nations that they didn't understand. It's just like, what? I was going to go to... Um, Zambia. Just mm. just a few months ago, I went to this church uh, down in Florida. I'm on the border of that church, and I said, "Look, you give me enough money, I'm going to Zambia." Because I told the person that was over that mission, like Smithers is his name. Mm. He's over Overland Missions. He's doing a great job worldwide, and the people that are following him. So they asked me to come to Zambia to deal with their the tribal leaders and kings, mm. and I was one of the ones. And so I said, "Well, I don't know." Uh, I don't want to be locked out of the country. And, uh, I mean, I was thinking that. I didn't tell him that. I just said, well, this is kind of quick because it was a week and a half. I had to make a decision. No more than two weeks. Then I had to have the money right away to be able to get on an airplane. So I told the people, give me the money. I just, I mean, you know, just like what I did. Uh, like, look, I, I never asked you for money because the issue is really isn't money. The issue is consenting in your heart with your will to do what God said. Wow. And so that's where he's at. So look, so would you like to sow your money to somebody who builds a church building or would you like to sow your seed to someone who's on fire doing what God said? Wow, mm, that's good. That's I mean, he so says, good. I give you power to get wealth to establish my kingdom in the earth. That's what the money is for. So the best place you can get it is to somebody where the fire is burning. Oh, so good. Mm -hmm. It's gracious, man. You don't get that. And then I, I know, I admit, I know a few billionaires. One of them, or two of them, may be listening to me right now. Male and female, and they know by me saying that who they are. So what are you going to do? You, you, you got your billionaire. Wow. I realized by looking at just in my basement, I got clothes down in the basement, shoes and all this. I'm trying to clear that stuff out because I downsized. But 
I got clothes I haven't worn in two years, shoes I haven't worn. What am I going to do with that? So good. Well, if I go home and be with the Lord, I'm going to leave it. It's exactly the same with the people who die. Somebody is going to get Wow. That money. Let, let me just say this to you. So All the good. money mm. that's ever been in the earth is still here. The only issue is where is that? Wow. Does, does God, because they couldn't take it anywhere. It's, it's here. It's in banks. You know, it's in bonds. It's in things. And some people didn't even leave a will. But the will, the natural will that they left isn't the most important will. The most important will is the will of God in your life. God will mm -hmm. finance what he commissions you to do. And that while those sinners still have that money, the money has no redemptive value and perishes while they spend it. Wow. The money has been redeemed. God says the gold is mine, the silver is mine. That money you got is for God's ministry to be done. Come on, Bishop. Wow. Don't stop cursing the millennials. Come on, Bishop. And give the money to them. <laughs> So good. You hear so me? Good. Come on, man. So I want to that's say this, good. you know, I want to say it earlier, but look, that's my son. But let me tell you something. You know how people do. Hey, nowadays they want their sons to support the dads. Well, I'm I'm Come on, I'm gonna give them a thousand dollars myself. Mm. I'm doing it. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a thousand dollars. Come on, Bishop. So Eileen, if you're on there and you go to one of the accounts that you got for me, transfer a thousand dollars over there into Isaiah's account. Wow, Bishop. Okay, go ahead and do that. See, wow. because the, the future is in the hands of the consecrated. Wow. God is not going to leave the earth in the hands of, of people who are doing nonsense and hiding out in their caves. Man, Bishop, come on. Man. Acting like you're all brave. You're not brave. I mean, look, e even in certain states, they say you can do this, the, the, the social distancing, the six feet rule. See? But in order for you to do what he said, forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together, you know, if two of you shall agree, it's touching anything. I mean, there's tons of stuff in the Bible. The great catching away ain't going to be an internet catching away. Mm. You, you're literally going to be brought together. All of heaven, the people are unified. There's wow. nobody up there worrying about no virus, nor is God. Wow. Mm -hmm. But see, you sound like nonsense. I had pastors say to me, well, Bishop, we got to be saved. You mean you're not in the hands of God? You mean what God says, he gives his angels charge over you to keep you in all the way. Isn't legitimate? Wow. You mean there's no angels helping you? You mean by washing your hands and, you know, don't put them on your face. You know, you know on, 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 this is on Fox News. I saw it myself. One person ask because he was taking questions this medical doctor he mm. said what about social distancing in your home he said well i think that would be a good idea so you said that when we're in the house we should be six feet apart wow how's that gonna work come on so the wife should get out of that bedroom out of that bed and <laughs> get on. over there in the other bedroom come on what about your children i mean this is nonsense god is your protection Mm. Your submission to God is your lifespan. See, well, hear me, Bishop. So I this think, is I think huge for you to get this, man. Look, so like, so, so what happened to me in going to Zambia? So they didn't give me enough. Money. So okay, that couldn't go. But within a few days, they shut down the airport in Johannesburg. So I couldn't have flown into the airport from America because they would, they didn't allow it. Wow. Therefore, I couldn't have gone to Zambia because I was going to go Zambia, Zambia to Cape Town, from Cape Town to Germany. So God knew that I had the heart for him, but it, I, I, I was missing it. Wow. So to keep me in his will, I had a dedicated heart, but a wrong head. I didn't have the right strategy. But God said, I ain't going to let you do something I don't want you to do because you're submitting. I'm not telling you everything in, in advance. I'm able to keep you from falling. Wow. Jew and present you faultless. So my my priority isn't to stay alive physically, it's to be alive more in the things of God. Wow. wow. Come on. Come on. That's the life span right there, people. My 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 calling is to believe in somebody 
like Isaiah and his brother. They, they, they're out here right now, mm -hmm. hitting it. Come on. So what's better for me? What, what, what would you think? What would I want at this point? What? The greatest thing I can hear is that they are going for God hard and standing against the work of the devil Come and on. carnal Christianity. Wow. That, 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 that makes me happy. See? But if you're trying to save your life, you're going to... Wow, Come say on. that again, Bishop. Say that again. Look, and he said, he said, if you try to save your life, you lose it. If you lose your life, you'll save it. Wow. Look, the essence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost, you should be witnesses. That word is martyr. Wow. So, you know, so the Holy Ghost emerges you into a surrendered life so that you know you're not going to die until God is ready for you to die. Wow. And when that happens, you'll say exactly. So good, mm -hmm. exactly. Come on, dying from mm -hmm. no coronavirus. Come on, Bishop. Mm -hmm. And all these discussion points, whether it's five G, all this stuff is coming up. That stuff is nonsense. I'm in the will of God right Come on, now. Bishop. I know some people that's probably and we'll be talking this strong. They like Bishop. I mean, come on. Now, how do you know you're not going to catch it? How do you know you don't have it? Because this is not even my own body. Come on, Bishop. It doesn't even Come belong on. to me. No, I've touched my face. See, I've touched my face. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Give me gloves to stop it. Get them gloves off, right? Come on. I mean, the, the gloves have the coronavirus on it. Man, you just touched the card. Come you on. touched the door. You forgot to clean it. I mean, you got money. You touched the money. Stop it. Come on. You're called of God, man. Have faith in God. Or the Bible says have the God kind of faith. If I had the God kind of faith, I'd be afraid. I'm not afraid. Mm. And the first person in the Bible, in Revelation 21, 8, that's going to find themselves in the lake of fire, fire are the fearful. Wow. The better translated, the coward. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Now, look, now I will say this, and I talked to, you know, Ken Barron that goes all the way out there. Ken, if you're looking at Isaiah, you, I told you about him, too. You're the executive vice president of, of you know, Billy Graham's. And you, you will travel. You got the bonus. You're a Jew. You will travel. You would have gone up to New York with Franklin Graham. Franklin, he's up there. They set up tents in Central Park. Wow. Told you not to go because he's your 70 something. So I want you to stay alive. I need you, but I'm not worried about my own life. But I don't want you to go. I'm commanding you to stay. That's what Franklin did. See, see. Wow. Uh, same kind of thing happened when I was. I was doing a Promise Keepers meeting in Tulsa, and Franklin flew in with bad weather. And then as he was about to, as everything was over, the storms, the lightning, and all this, I said, you're going to fly out? He said, if they let me. <laughs> Come on. I said, what do you mean? Because he has a private jet. Same way that Ken told me that he wasn't worried about flying commercial jet going up there to New York in Central Park. They have a private jet. There's a reason right there to not be broke. Come on, Bishop. Get on your mm. own jet and fly over there where God told you to get to. Wow. Mm. But you do. And people are fussing about something like that. That stuff ain't worth nothing. The jet's going to burn. Come You're on, worth Bishop. something. If you mm. get there, everything changes. Wow. So here that man is. Scores of other people on the staff of first responders were there. Look, it's Franklin's goal anywhere there is trouble to get there first. Who is this wow. man? Now, when they locked us out of, of say, Frankfurt, Germ of Germany, or Africa, do you think the missionaries, like Overland Mission people and whatever, the YWAMers, the people, I know numbers of these people, do you think that John Dawson said, ah, oh, I got to get home to America because I may get caught over here? And the one thing that the Lord made clear to me, he said, you're saying your home is America? Wow. Your mm. home is not heaven? The greatest place you should want to be is with me. Wow. And if you die, it's a sure portal to that physically. The body wears out. It's not worthy of you anyway. 
Bishop, I think our generation, I think our generation, Bishop, doesn't, you know, number one, doesn't talk about eternity. I think about how you were traveling, preaching, training people for eternity. No one's even heard of this, this talk, getting ready for eternity that we're not. And I've heard you say this before, you know, we're not going to be floating around on clouds all day long and all and all night and just singing in eternity. But God actually has something he's preparing. I was just reading today how Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. I'm preparing something for you you not just so you can mm. relax for all of eternity yeah. or sit around but there's actually a plan and i thought about how we spend years planning our 401k we spend years planning our vacation we spend years worrying about this life but no one even thinks about bishop or talks about where we're going to spend forever or what we're going to do forever i mean you talk about people wow. what will eternity be like look like or have you prepared for eternity and they'll tell you well i spent two weeks preparing my Disneyland vacation and I got the hotel and I got the rental car and I figured out, you know, what, where we're going to go and the water slides we're going to go to and yeah. what car we're going to drive and then ask them, okay. well, how long have you spent preparing for eternity? And they're going to say, what do you mean preparing for eternity? I think Bishop yeah. in America, we have such a temporary gospel. I think what Paul called, yeah. we preach a different Jesus and a different gospel that we're not even concerned about, you know, our, our eternity. We're worried about, as you said, this Ooh. little life here on earth and how can I hang mm -hmm. on to it and how can I enhance it and how can I make it better but then yeah. I'm thinking about what about the life to come and I think as you know I'm 28 but our generation we're kind of like this generation of you only live once and don't worry about the future and we'll live in the now and live for today and I've even heard people say well Jesus is your friend yeah. and your boyfriend and he's not a big deal he's not holy he's not righteous he's not a judge but then I read scripture bishop and I read the judgment seat of Christ I read about the books of our life that he'll open up not just the book of you know i pray to sinner's prayer and i'm the lamb's book of life wow, but the eternal realm as you talk about the eternal yes, realm yes. and i think bishop yes. our generation is hungry to hear about the supernatural realm hungry to hear mm. about the eternal dimension the as you call yes. the eternal realm and so um man that that is is just something that is so overlooked i think in our generation that's so good you know somebody asked me on one of the podcasts that i did last week they asked me is there war in the next war? Do we fight in the next war? And I and I and I I said to him, all you gotta do, I just read to you Revelation, of course there's fighting in the next world. But look, I said you're fighting in the next world now. Wow. Because Whoa. he said we fled, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but look, mm -hmm. but against principalities, powers, might, dominions, wicked spirits in heavenly places. Wow. In order to mm. defeat the devil, you can't defeat him in this world. Wow. You have to go into his world Take notes, in eternal realm and beat him there. He's a fallen archangel without the backing or favor of God. Wow. So we think in, t in terms of time and space, but God occupies both of them at the same time. Wow. wow. And so therefore we go into that world and we whip them there. Come and that's on. why it says, you know, Matthew 18, what you bind on, in earth is bound in heaven. What you, what you loose on earth is loose in heaven. Mm. The Bible says we have our manner of living in heaven. Not wow. we're going to go to heaven. We live there now. This ain't no joke. Wow. When he says to the disciples, in my name you shall cast out devils. Look, both, both the first Adam and the last Adam, from the beginning of their ministry, had to fight in the spiritual world in mm -hmm. order, watch, to get their ministry going. Jesus, look, Adam had to fight the fallen archangel there in the serpent. And he had to fight in the spirit world. Now look, I'm, and then Jesus, from the beginning of his ministry, he was driven into the wilderness to do what? To be tempted by the devil. Mm. So he goes there in the wilderness and watch, let me, let me just go there for a minute. Let me just, at, let us look so at good, what Bishop. what so was good. that actually saying where was jesus fighting it was jesus fighting the devil in the flesh or was he fighting them in the, in the spirit so was he fighting them in the invisible world so let, let's i'll tell you what let's just go to matthew 4 just for a minute let's just go there because jesus had to begin his ministry where the first adam lost it wow and this Whoa. is hugely important and where? Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life. That's what you have to defeat in your life. Wow. Once you understand that 
the issues of placement in the next world is the issue of behavior. Are you functioning at the level that satisfies God to not only place you, but let you administrate power? It comes from inside you. But look what it says. In, in Matthew 4, then was Jesus led up in the spirit, look, of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. Now, watch. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the son of God, command that these stones be made bread. Now, what, where is that? What do you mean, command stones to be made bread? Nobody's done that like that. Wow. He's dealing with him to exercise your ability in the spirit world outside of the will of God. Wow. This was a spiritual mm. battle. It was, this, this is, and you got, he had to fight there. It's, it's, the, it's the lust of the flesh. And, and Jesus said unto him, it is written. Now watch. Man should not live by bread alone. Look, this is not. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. What was he saying? When you are standing on the word, you cannot lose. Wow, come on. No, 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 no. It's not possible. Look, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word, what? Endures forever. How are you um, going to beat something that that never diminishes, that is always wow, at its on. highest level? It is that is in the forever realm. There is nothing in the earth that functions in the forever realm but the people listening to me right now. You're the, you're the only thing here, human beings are the mm -hmm. only people authorized to live forever. Wow. What they live by is the word. They are what they eat. Wow. Wow. Oh, my and goodness. And so if you eat wow. the trash, if you eat the flesh, if you oh, eat the natural, free. if you sit there and look at that TV all day long and listen to what those people are saying about the coronavirus, that spirit, that, 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 imp that impetus is going to come into you. You're going to be mm. thinking about touching things. You're going to think about people breathing on you. You're going to be thinking about, you know, am I getting, is it dormant? Do I have it and I don't really wow. know it? All of this nonsense. Why? Because you haven't fed yourself the eternal word. Let me just underscore that again. The fact that the word is eternal says it cannot be defeated. So good. Come on, Bishop. It lasts forever. And then in the, where he's quoting is out of Deuteronomy 8. That word, the reality of the word quickened in your life is undefeatable. Wow. The devil can't defeat you. Principalities, powers, systemic evil. See? And you are authorized now to function as an eternal being in this world, in this world. Mm, wow. Because that's your world. And God is going to delegate whole worlds, and this is strong stuff, to these people who have the gravitas to handle it. Wow. Because every dad wants their children to be able to handle business the way they handle it and even be more responsible. They want bragging rights. Well, Jesus said to his disciples, which were really his children, because he's the creator, the works that I do should you do also in greater works. Wow. That's what every dad wants. Greater works? So let me just go here for, with you for go a minute. Ahead, go ahead. Is there repopulation in the next world? That's an eternal question. Come on. Now, now, what do you mean? There's no marrying and giving in marriage? Go to Matthew there. I'm not finished with this yet. This, he said there's no marrying and giving in marriage when they asked him the question about the resurrection. He says we're going to be as the angels. So if there's no marriage, there's no union of the marriage, but nobody gets pregnant and have children, is there going to be repopulation mm, wow. in the next world? Now, if you don't think on an eternal level, you don't think on the capability of a person made an image of God without sin in his life, sealed in the nature of the creator. Wow. So the question then is, could you populate a world? Mm. Well, let me answer that already for you. It's already been done. Wow. What do you mean? When God made Adam and told him, Speaking prophetically to his wife, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it. The earth is Adam's world. Wow. Because all the children in the earth came from Adam. Wow. 
His failure becomes the world's failure. And it started right from his family. So do you think, so then Jesus comes as the last Adam, and I'm taking you here in Matthew 4. The, the first Adam populated the earth. Christ, the last Adam, becomes the portal to people being born of God in the spirit. Wow. He's populating the heavens. So what do you think you're going to do in the heavens? Wow. Exactly what Jesus did on the earth. He showed us that. Why do you think you lead people to Jesus? You're populating the heavens. Come on, Bishop. They're already in the earth. People, you get born again already living so at the age good. of accountability. But when they get born again, they now get born into another world. So good. And how you handle yourself. So you look at all of the rewards Paul talks about. It's not achievement. It's behavior. Wow. And so when you look at those in the lake of fire, their behavior isn't suited for the heavenlies or to be responsible over anything because they were drunken in self-love. Mm. And this is what, look, you, Matthew, look, look with me just for a minute. Uh, Matthew 4 again. Then the devil taking him up into the holy city and sent him on a pinnacle of, look, a pinnacle of the temple. Now what? What are you doing? Taking me where? Where are you taking me? Come on. So you're saying that is this that's in the flesh? He's dealing, the devil is dealing with Jesus. This is a, the life. And said unto him, if thou be the son of God, cast thyself down for his written. He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. That is a, everything the devil asked him to do was in the eternal dimension. Mm. Wow. Jesus had to beat him in that world. Whoa. Not in the flesh. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. No, he had to beat the devil in the world of the eternal. Those same three challenges of, the, of Adam with the serpent talking to his wife was on the same level. He had authority over the earth naturally, but he had to win in the realm of the eternal. First, it's before so he ever could get out of that garden, he had to win because God had already decreed he was going to be over the whole earth. He still was over the whole earth through his progeny, but at mm. a level below the green order. Oh my gosh. Now Jesus makes a way that you and I can access the heavenlies and be brought into alignment with the forever realm. That's why all the fruit of the spirit is exactly that. You'll never not be those things. Why? Because those mm. qualities allow God to put you in charge of something. People, so good, Bishop. I'm screaming right now. So just stop so it. Good. I looked at myself earlier and I said I was just frowning. I'm screaming and so all. So good. You know, come on. Just bear with me. So this last temptation, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Look what he's saying to him. Man, why? You don't qualify to challenge me. Oh, my God. I'm not suggesting that to you. you do you understand who you're talking to? Hey, Ben, he's bringing him to a cognitive understanding that you don't really realize who you're messing with because you are deceived. That's why you're a deceiver. Your nature got you doing nonsense. And again, the devil taking them up into an exceeding high mountain and showing them. Now what? What did you do? They walked up. <laughs> come on, come on. You know, and falling on age, what did they do? Walk up? No, this is a spiritual battle. And show them the kingdoms of the world. How is that in the glory of them? How do you show them that? What is that? Well, that's what the Bible tells us now. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, mights, dominions, wicked spirits, and evil spirits in heavenly places. You and I are to be up into those dimensions now. Wow, it's good. And otherwise, you'll keep dealing with stuff that relates to issues on the earth. God is trying to qualify you into a competence for the heavenlies. Mm. I mean, he could look, Paul said in Romans 1 that he preached the gospel to the whole known world in his day. Do you think, you think the issue is getting people saved? That's so good. The issue is getting people developed. Because why? Everybody that's going to be in heaven. 
And at every level you're going to grow to, you'll never say, wow, I didn't know I was going to be here. That's good. How did wow. I ever get up here? Wow. No, your will is going to be in alignment. The level you function in. Because Christianity is lived not by your feelings, it's lived by your wow. will. The only thing that God tolerates outside of his will at this point in time are the people made in his image. You got to consent to God. And so what you call devotion, holiness, consecration. Look, I was just reading over in uh, Leviticus, right? Right now, I was just reading Leviticus 11. That is about the holiness of God. And you read that chapter, and it's, it's about that and their food. So I'm telling you, your level of transformation, which I want to tell you this, this next revival is the last revival. Say it's a it. transformational revival. Come on. It's what you're becoming. Now, now let me say this about, I mean, Bishop Malley's on the phone, Deb, number of these people, I can't see them. I don't know. Yeah, I, I said, Isaiah, I mean, said who they are, numbers of other pastors. But let me just say this. I said it to them, but I want to say it to Isaiah. So look at him now. So nine years of devotion before. So now what if a city became what Isaiah is right now in their development? What if a whole city just, mm. they, they never could get to be like at the full level that God is, but they just got to where Isaiah is. What would happen to that city? What would that city be like? Mm. Well, just think about it for a minute. Alcohol would dry up. Gambling would Come dry on, up. No dope, no murders, no thieves, no divorce, no lying, no cheating. That would not only be a revival, that would mm. So good. Based mm. on who he is right now. It's what you're becoming is greater than what you're going through. Come on, Bishop. Wow. What you're becoming so is good. permanent. What you're going through is temporary. Wow. Man. The coronavirus isn't worthy of you. You're a permanent, transformed person being made ready for a next assignment in the eternal world. Mm. This stuff isn't worthy of you. Hey Amen. I'm looking at the wrong place on my phone, but I, That's you know, what it looks what good, I, Bishop. It looks good. I'm totally. So good. Look what he says in verse 44 of Leviticus 11. For I am the Lord your God. You should therefore sanctify yourselves. And that's the issue. I have right now a consecration journal right in front of me. Listen, people. And then he says this. And you should be holy. Look, for I am holy. Now, you can make that into rules because this was law over in the Old Testament. But the law was only a prototype of the genetic seed that's in you. Wow, that's good. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed by the word of God. In the Old Testament, it's what you it's, it's obeying God. In the New Testament, it's becoming God. That's good. Mm. See, he says, but he foretasted when he says, be ye holy. Why? For your father in heaven. He's asking you to give consent to what is already at work inside of you when you got born again. Wow. He said, go ahead and be that because the seed of that is already in you. There is an incorruptible seed. But I don't know how any believers that believe they're incorruptible. I mean, Fanny got in a lot of trouble for believing in that, that the right means get the right results. If God said it, that's what it is. He was an attorney, but he, he read Blackstone's commentaries, Common Law England. Mm. And Blackstone, William Blackstone wrote those commentaries based on the Old Testament scripture here. And the way a person became a lawyer was by being what we call an intern. They didn't, they didn't learn the letter and then take a test. They learned from the behavior and conduct of the person with whom they were interning. That's so mm. good. When Jesus said, make disciples, he wasn't saying, give. look, somebody just told me today, they said, wow, man, there are some people, you know, that's talking about, well, the first original people, Adam and all of them, he was black. His color was like darker hue and all this. Then uh, we need to understand Hebrew and all that. I understand what you're saying, but you're not the author of your gender or your Again. pigmentation. Wow. 
You got to deal with God. He made you that color. He brought you into the earth. So because somebody mistreats you, you take your focus from God to people, and your level is always going to be below the creative order. Cursed is the man that puts his confidence in man and makes flesh his arm. So good. The mm. people that, that, that didn't make you don't, are not authorized to determine your value or your assignment. Say it, up. Say it. Tell them to shut up. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. You, they don't have your assignment. I, the pigmentation of my skin, I had nothing to do with that. There's something redemptive about it. God's you. Mm. And whatever race you are, God's using it. But but let me just tell you something. What race will you be in the next world? Come on, Bishop. What will be the predominant race then? Wow. There you wow. are. He already said it. You're a holy nation. Wow. In first Peter, that's I me mean, ethnicity. That's the same word for race. It's not be defined by what geographical area you're from, what language you speak. It's defined by what you become. Wow. You are a holy ethnos, meaning your behavior. The fact that you are like God is what makes you a part of the same race. Mm. So good, Bishop. Whoa. You can't be beaten. You can't be beaten. Undefeatable. You dominate. You're made to do it. You're made for leadership. Mm. And when he made Adam, he made him to be in charge of everything. And his children born in him, you're in the, you're the leadership. You represent me in the earth, my birth. So, so let's say the New Testament is an old covenant, New Testament, new, new covenant. Then this person is saying, well, we need to understand Hebrew. So I've had leaders leave me and said, Bishop, I, I, I found Hebrew and I, I don't think we are living Christianity. It's too much Greco-Roman influence. So I have a Hebraic understanding. I'm learning Hebrew now. Well, the people that are Hebrew haven't even accepted Jesus largely as Savior. So you want to learn their language? Think you can be a better Christian? Wow. I said, okay, let wow. me see that. I, I, I said it. Let me see that. Wow. So you're saying you treat your wife better because you know definitions. Come on, Bishop. That you have more power. You have more disciples. A definition is not transformation, Come man. On, Bishop. It's the spirit that quickens. He's not... Quickening Hebrew. Come on, Bishop. Go there. Salvation is of the heart. Man, he's looking at your heart beyond language. God existed before language. Mm, that's so good. So the Powerful. language of the next world has never been spoken in this world. The closest you can get to it is tongues. So good. Mm. You got to stop it. You're looking at two stuff too much out of a of a of a human construct. Mm. You gotta look at it at an eternal one. So and there's plenty of stuff in the Bible. I mean, that's what I'm talking to you about right now. So good. Holiness is not rules. Come Even on, though he Bishop. gave them rules, but they never were. Law was never what God was gonna use to transform anybody. So good. It lets you see the standard, but you still couldn't see it unless the Holy Spirit quickened it within. And he says, and he says, the same as he told Adam, be ye holy, for I am holy. God is saying, now, the subject is understood. What? You. So it's a command. But what's he saying? Give consent to being holy because you came from me. Wow. Oh, my goodness. So good. You're not holy because you act holy. You're holy because you've accepted the genetic order of being born from the person that is that. He never oh, wasn't man. that. Wow. So you are that. You're of God. So a covenant is not greater than a birthright. A covenant is an exchange. Mm. A birthright is what you are. This is too good. You need a covenant with God. I'm in the family. So like the people said, the name, the name, the name, the name, the blood, the blood. You're not saved if you're not born of the blood. Of Come on, Bishop. I don't need to repeat to the devil, the blood, the blood, the blood. Religion. Come on. The name, the name, the name. I mean, look, every person that has a daddy, their children has their daddy's name. If you say, well, I'm going to change my name. Look, you still can't change the genetic order. Come on. 
Mm. So I don't just have the name or use the name. I am the name I'm using. Wow. So when I say something, being of God, it has to get out of the way and do what I say. So good. Because I'm in the royal family from an eternal dimension. Mm. Ain't no joke. That's real. So good. I mean, even if you don't see the devil move, that doesn't mean he didn't feel the power. Come on. Be like what? I mean, there are different there are different levels of position. You can be in a company. You can be a supervisor. You can be a vice president. You can be, uh, you know, a general manager. Each one of them have different levels of authority. That's so good. And you can be in God, and you you're at a different place. You look. I know I'm not at the same place I was 25 years ago. Even though some of what I'm telling you, I knew back then. Mm. But I've become a lot of this now. See, like. I, I never was pretty much preparing sermons. But what I do is get alone to to be with God wow. so that nobody else Talk can invade it, that time. Mm. So that I'm there where I'm not in the house where nobody can hear me pray. I'm not there if God can't interrupt that. So I go as far away as I can into a place where God understands he is my priority. And then I don't go there asking him for anything. Wow. Oh. Because why? Because what I'm praying is not what's going to happen. What he speaks is what's going to happen. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I should do is study to be quiet. So good. And in my being That's quiet, so then, being that he is the husband, the husband initiates. Wow. And the problem with, with Adam is he let the wife initiate. He reversed the creative order. She didn't have a God said. And when God comes down offended with the man, he said, because you hearken to the voice of your wife. It wasn't that he listened to her. The whole order of creation had been changed in the earth. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. You should, You had the God said for your household. That, your wife didn't have the God said. She had a devil said. You should have told the devil to shut up and the woman to be still and come on. I'm going to run the, that devil out of there. You kept the order of the creation. This is so good, Bishop. Bishop, I would love for you even talking about, you know, you a lot of people in the chat, number one, are blown away. People are saying, I've never heard this. Where has this been my whole life? We're not hearing this talked about in the nominal church, especially in America. And I know one night we were talking and I asked you, Bishop, where do you get, and I know this sounds like a very maybe dumb question to some, and it was probably a dumb question I asked, but I was going, Bishop, where are you getting this revelation, this knowledge, this wisdom, and really what you're preaching is stuff no one's preaching, and you started telling me about your prayer life, waking up early, crying out to God. I know you talked about praying even in your car, getting hotel rooms to pray. I think a lot of people in America, in our generation, in the church at large, doesn't pray. Mm -hmm. They don't have a prayer yeah. life. They don't have that relationship, that one-on-one. -on -one. And I think everyone thinks, you know, my high calling is to be a preacher or my high calling is to be an evangelist or the high calling is to be like Isaiah Saldivar to have a following or whatever it could be. But I tell people this all the time, Bishop, our highest calling is the place of prayer. Our highest mandate, if you're in the Man. chat, there's over 300 people watching right now, your Man. highest calling is not to be an evangelist, is not to be a yeah. good preacher, is not to be the latest worship leader or to dress good or be attractive or be some mega church pastor. Your highest right. calling is the place of prayer and to minister to the Lord in prayer. I know everyone That's in our good, generation Isaiah. wants to minister for the Lord, but I'm going, God, where are the Samuels that would minister to the Lord? Where are those yeah. that would get in the place of prayer, would cry? out to God in the secret mm -hmm. place I think in this coming day Bishop and what we're seeing happening in the world the only way we're gonna get out of this is a developed prayer life is getting in the place of prayer is getting in yeah. fellowship with God is locking away in the secret place Bishop I know one of your secrets to mm -hmm. your ministry is your secret place is your time with God people see you minister you preaching you writing all these books and doing all these things but they don't realize that you're in the secret place that your source your strength is the presence of God is tapping into that divine order as you said fathers I would even 
love you to talk about being a priest of their home, praying with their family. We don't even hear Bishop in our generation praying with your family. We don't hear about devotionals. You know, back in the day, there was devotional, family devotionals, but that devotion life is missing. And I know you've written many books about it. And actually guys, in our giveaway at the end of all of this, you know, later on, we're going to do a giveaway. I'm going to be giving away some of Bishop's books is what I'll do is I'll buy them on Amazon. I'll send them directly to your house. If you win the giveaway tonight, I'll be sending you some of Bishop's books directly to your house because Bishop, I know you're major on the devotion life, on the sacrifice, on the priorities, on waking up early and praying and making God a priority. I believe this Bishop, that when we make God a priority, he makes us a priority. I believe that when we take God serious, God takes us serious. And I know there's a lot of soft believers, you say, and a lot of soft preachers that don't have that backbone in the spirit, that backbone in prayer, and they're recycling. They're recycling somebody else's message because they're not willing to pay the price in the secret place get the oil in the secret place i've been saying forget about the toilet paper we need the oil the oil of god is found in the secret place i would love for you bishop you could take it wherever you want but even just talking about your devotion life your prayer life and really the secret to the anointing is is in that place of prayer Mm. that's awesome isaiah the bottom line is what a man is in secret is what he is wow because because the bible is man looks at the outward appearance but god looks so, and when you look at almost everybody that's used in the Bible, God, look, he finds them in secret and he uses them in public. So I mean, good. we don't even know where wow. some of the people in the Bible is, even come from, but, but their lives bear witness that they are the impetus of God. Mm. And, and, and we are a house of prayer, but so good. This, this, what, what is it for though? Because in the place of vitality, when you see him, we'll be like him. See, in other words, we go in prayer to meet God there. So good. And we want to create an environment where he's pleased to come, where our bodies is made for him to not only inhabit. So we're talking about vital communion with God. But look, but what he really wants us to do is to build up the vitality of him on the inside of us. Mm. There's some amazing things he said in scripture. In this regard, let me tell you things that are not real. To us. If I, I almost fear saying it. Come on, Bishop. But in terms of, I'm talking about our call. If people, if you're listening, have you ever read 1 Corinthians 6? <laughs> and and I'm, I'm looking at it in the um, the Living Translation, but I have it in both places, but I want you to look at something. He says, when one of you have a dispute with one another, with another believer, how dare you file a lawsuit to ask a secular court to decide the matter instead of taking it to other believers? And then look at this question. It's a question. Don't you realize that someday we believers will judge the world? Mm. Now, you can, you can look up that word if you want, the world. But that word judge is adjudication. So now watch. Now look, watch me. So, so you good. were, he was a prophet. He is now a priest. And that's where we're talking about the prayer. He's a priest. He ever lives to make intercession for us. So the essence of our, of our lives is the fact that there's relational equity going on, you, going on between you and God. It's wow. not counterfeit. So look, so every person knows if he's a prayer, not by the fact that he prays, but by the fact that he surrenders to the place that God makes that his reality. Mm. I mean, so, you know, as you stay in prayer until God himself makes himself real to you. Wow. I'm writing that down. You, you don't do it out of duty. And so when he makes himself real to you, almost every time it's going to be some level of conviction where where when this is what Derek Prince said. He said, it seems like when I would read scripture, the scriptures would read me. So good. Until you in prayer get to the place where you know, now this is it right now, where God is adjusting where you are in the face of his life. That's when you know there's been a connection. And almost every time it's going to be 
I'm sorry. Come on, please Bishop. forgive me. Because why? Because he's perfecting you for forever. So like, mm -hmm. so look, so I know these people. They have prayer movements. They say they're prayer. You got a prayer movement. You lead a prayer movement, but your husband don't get along. You, you, you don't sleep in the same bedroom even in many cases. Wow. You need a prayer movement and nobody, and now you're a prophet because you got some insight. Did God want you to talk about the insight you got? Could, did, didn't he want you to take ground in the heavenlies and never get the credit? Mm. But now you get a word and God tells you by, vitally what's going to happen in some instances and you're out talking about it. Instead of going into that dimension where it really originates and beating the enemy and never speak of it anywhere out in public. Wow. 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 Now wow. you want recognition. So good. Now you call yourself an intercessor. And, you, and you're quick to say, and I, I know these people, please don't, don't get offended, just take it. So good. See, to you, you're quick to say, my well, God's called me an intercessor. Let me tell you the word I want to say to you. Shut up. Come on. <laughs> Come on. If you're an intercessor, be it. Don't talk about it. Come brag on. about it. Want somebody wow. to recognize it. That's so real. Cultivate this thing with God. Man, he's not playing. You, 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 after this life, you don't get a chance to fix anything. Wow. So, so now watch. So the first law of government. Now, now what, why would I? Read, don't you know you one one day, don't you realize that someday you, you believers are going to judge the world? So where would I get this discussion from? I get it from 1 Corinthians 11 on the communion scripture, where it says if you'll judge yourself, you'll not be judged. Wow. Mm. So what are you saying? The first law of government is self-government. Mm. So cool. how are you going to judge angels? Wow. When you let your own private life get away with everything. Wow. Oh, my goodness. You spend That's money funny. that God gave you to give away. You, you talk about things you shouldn't be talking, people you shouldn't be talking about. I mean, if you don't govern yourself and in private, look, I know ministers and leaders that when people, Christians, that are, love them because of their fame, they're on television, yeah. they have these ministries that they're being used, and people want to get around them because they feel they must know God because they're being used. No, 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 no. The gifts say nothing about the person with the gift. It says something about the gift. These people could be used. Ooh. I mean, you, I've just read the scripture before. Many is going to say in my name, did not cast out devils. So these are people being used. Did not heal the sick. He's going to flee from me. I never knew you. Because you can have a gift of God and never cultivate a relationship with God. Wow. See, dear, dear ministers, sure. listen to me now. You're so busy. You want success. You want to be known. I, I, I had preachers tell me God's called me to national prominence. Where in the Bible is anything like that? Wow. This is your flesh talking to you, dude. If anything, he's, taught, he's calling you to anonymity. Mm. The reason that many people don't understand you don't know the Holy Spirit is because he is so humble. <clears throat> you think the Holy Ghost, I mean, when he comes in a still small voice with his life, but you think the Holy Ghost is like shouting you down all of them. No, 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 no. He comes with, why can't you find him easily? Why don't you know him better? Because he changes, he judges your heart. And he, and he really looks at you to see, do you really want him? Wow. Mm. And he will never make himself so vitally known because he comes in the spirit of Jesus and he'll never usurp Jesus. Wow. Wow. He'll never be as popular as Jesus. Wow. But yet he's administrator of everything that's done in the earth, from the creation all the way to the resurrection. And he never takes the credit for it. Wow. And there are too many ministers. So I know people, you get with these people that got this call on their lives, yeah. and in private, they treat people like dirt yep. because yep. they don't seem to know as much Talk word. You know, they that's don't really seem good. to, you know, to uh, you know, to have 
the relationship with other famous people. They don't seem to have enough money, so they're mistreated. So sometimes wow. people fall away from God by how they're treated with national prominent ministers in private. That's mm. true, Bishop. I mean, when you get somebody in private, man, that's when they should really see the real authenticity that is in your life that's of so God. It real. shouldn't drive them away from God. It should drive them to God. Wow, that's really good. You should be able to lead them into that place. Mm. I'm going to this a lot. Of, so but watch, good. go with me. First Corinthians 6, go there First with me for a minute. Six. He says, don't you know you're going to judge the world? Now, is that like just the world meaning the races of people? Now, God is going to judge not just the world, but the ages. Now, 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 come on now. I'm, I'm kind of out there with you right now. See, when you see him, you're going to be like him. In other words, you can read Daniel 7. He's going to give the kingdom, the ancient of days, to the son. The son is going to take the kingdom to the saints. And the saints are going to take the kingdom. That means you're going to adjudicate. You're going to administrate the whole creation. But this is what you got to understand. How a man is in private is how he is in God. Second, how a man runs his house. Is, I have a series of tapes called Every Family is a World. What Adam was in his house is what the world became. Wow. You can't treat your wife like dirt and never pray with your children. Fact that God is going to put you over a planet. Wow. Every, he's called God the judge of all. He's governing your life for places. Mm -hmm. So you don't need anybody watching you. God is there. The fact that you would do nonsense shows the disconnect between you and God. Wow. Mishandled money, you know, you know, use giving schemes to get people to give you money. So good. Use the prophetic gift to get people to give you more money. Say that, Bishop. Wow. Wow. Shame on you. Say that. <clears throat> But there's a lot of it going on. And I could call the names on how some of it began. And some of you, I mean, I don't care how great of a prophet you are. You're not perfect in it. Come on, Bishop. Where's the humility in it? Come on. Why don't you break down? Why don't you tell the, those people some of your faults sometimes? You mean you don't have any? Wow. So he says, I'll revive the heart of the broken. I'll revive the heart of the contrite. So where's your contriteness? Do you see? So good. Where can you say the, 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 the new the young man, uh, Isaiah, he's the new voice. He's saying things. He's living something. Can you say that? Do you always have to position yourself like over somebody? That's good. That's so good, Bishop. Jesus washed his disciples' feet, the missing sacrament of the church. That represents your lifestyle. He says, do you know what I've done to you? Just as I've washed your feet, you are to wash one another's feet. I, I was in a meeting. I mean, right now, it may be that Ann Jimenez is looking at me and John Blanchard and, and, and that. They're yeah, looking they at me. They watch. probably are. Yeah. They may be on. But if mm -hmm. they're not, it doesn't make any difference. But they saw me wash at least somewhere around 70 pastors and their wives. I anointed their feet, got oh. down on the ground. Now, now, look, now let me just be honest with you, like Paul. I mean, I've spoken before in Europe. I've spoken for the Salvation Army, for all the major denominations, global. I've done all of that. But so, am I such a big shot I can't go low? Come on. Get down there at the feet. Boom, Jesus says, I set this as an example. Mm. If you humble yourself, no, God doesn't have to humble you. Now, there are people coming out of the woodwork on coronavirus calling me up, saying, I think I need to get my life right. In. I don't. You're right. I, I, I think I need to repent now. Yes, and you God bless you. Yes, you're. you're. But, but let me tell you what the scriptures say about that. Now, you, you may not have read this lately. This Come on, so bear good. with me for a minute. So good, I mean, I, I am really working so you over here. And this yeah. is, you understand? You but Psalm 107, look, look what it says here. I, watch this now. 
17, 107, 17s. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their iniquities, are afflicted. Their souls abort all manner of meat, and they draw near to the gates of death. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble, and he saveth them out of their distresses. Look, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Look at this now. So look, every place of tribulation becomes a point of rededication. Wow. But what you won't do by revelation, you will do by tribulation. That's what this is saying. But the first thing that you are identified as for waiting to have to go through judgment to get your life straight, he calls those people fools. Wow. Mm. If you've got to wait till the trouble starts to repent of your sins, God says you're a fool. But, but God says, I, I, I'll, I'll deliver you as a fool, but I'm not encouraging you to be one. That's a word, Bishop. That is, that is a, oh my God. I'd rather do what God says by revelation and not have to go through tribulation. That's what happened to this country. Yes. 1857, yes. Great Awakening. Led by Jeremiah Lanthier. It was an awakening. Mm -hmm. It was after that early awakening with the 1830s with, with Legree, you know, the, these people, McCready, uh, Finney's Revivals, and these things, uh, Philadelphia. Rochester, New York, Rome, New York. I mean, it's great moves of God. It was an awakening. And the second one, I mean, it's controversy over it. Maybe that was the third one. It's the third one. In the 1700s, maybe with, with Jonathan Edwards and all. So there have been like these external revivals hot for God. But look, the, 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 the 1857 Great Awakening was accelerated by the 1858 collapse of the economy. Wow. That's so good. That's oh what made God. people really go for God. He had done it by prayer in this bill, this, this noonday prayer led by Jeremiah Lafayette, but we were unbroken as a nation. We should have dealt with men stealing then. But because we wouldn't release those slaves, the North and South got in a fight and how many died? 600,000. Yeah. 600,000 men died over that fight? Yes. Why? Because where you, what you wouldn't do by revelation, you did do by tribulation. Wow. Where you wow. didn't give God your best a tithe, the devil took a tithe. Wow. 600,000 oh was one-tenth of the population of America. Say that again, Bishop. Wow. The 600,000 that died, they didn't do it by revelation. God says, be broken. Humble yourself. You know men stealing, and that's uh, which, which that's what Wesley called it. Men. Now, am I talking to you as a black man, mad at white people? Get out of here! It's nonsense. Come on, Bishop. We were unbroken as a nation, and we're not gonna go on with it. So the war ended. Slavery, slaves were released. Sure, they were. 1877 compromise happened. Then those, and then the American missionaries came down educated blacks that were in slavery, they became 70 to 80% literate within 35 years by 100. But those men that couldn't get jobs now because they had to get paid, they made vagrancy laws. And the vagrancy laws were, if you don't have a job and you're caught in, they, they put them in jail. They put those guys that couldn't get jobs in jail and then hired them out to companies to work for them for pennies, but the sheriffs got the money. That was called convict leasing. Mm. Why did that happen? Because America was unbroken. Wow. Wow. That's so good. So what happened? So what happened Heavy. in the 1900s? Again, we had the Great Depression. The economy collapsed again. We had what? Then we had what? World War Two. Yeah. And then a hundred years after the emancipation, we had the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act. What is that? Unbroken. How oh, unbroken. And then we had 
lynchings. And the lynching started when black people started these economic centers, which was like Wall Streets. Mm. And whites were jealous over it and lynched those people who started these businesses. They were jealous. And one of the most famous ones was Tulsa, Oklahoma. But I, I identified in one of my books 19 Wall Streets that black people started, economic centers. They weren't like the, the blacks today. They're looking for the government to give them money. I mean, there are people looking for money right now. Yeah. I mean, come on, give me some money. Help me to make it. Look, if you're connected with God, you're one idea away from crazy money right now. Come on, Bishop. Go there, Bishop. There are, there are always people who prosper in a down economy. Yes. Now, everybody's mm. broke. Mm. You as a Christian, you, you haven't told yourself you're supposed to. I can't tell you. I'm, almost every day, I sow a seed to somebody who's in a service industry. Wow. To be on the supply side. Adam was never made to be in need. He was created to be on the resource side like God is. Wow. Leroy Thompson is the one who says this. I'll never be broke another day in my life. I mean, why should you be? Come you on. should be broken, but not broke. Broken, but not broke. Come on, Bishop. Yeah. Why? Because you're the stewards of the resources of God. You can be trusted. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. So Let good, me go Bishop. back to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and so get this. Yes. So the nation, what's going on? The earth itself is repudiating the level of Christianity. Wow. I'm just saying, everything, Romans 8, the earth is in pain, everything is in pain, waiting for to wit the adoption of truth. What's that saying? It's waiting for us not to get raptured, but us to grow up. Everything mm. is lifted at the level of the transformation of believers. So wow. Good. God lifts you and you lift everything else. We are called to lift. We are by nature, by birthright, lifters. We make things better. Mm -hmm. Like God. And you have it in you to make things better, to be on the resource side. But you got to consent to it, that the communication of your faith, by Philemon 6, may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing that's in you in Christ. So good. You got to say I'm a conqueror. You got to say, my family will never get the coronavirus. Come on, Bishop. You got to say, my, my family will always be on the economic supply side. You got to say, my family line and all my spiritual sons and daughters on, are going to go out into the hall the whole world and be different. Look, what I was going to say about those missionaries, they didn't lock those missionaries out when they shut down the airport. They locked them in. Come on, Bishop. Those missionaries weren't going to leave anyway. There are worse conditions in Africa, India, and other places in the world than the coronavirus. Wow. The missionaries in China, the underground church, those people there right now, they, they can lose their lives all the time. It's been like that for tons of years. Mm. The, the coronavirus was right there in China, but they're already suffering. That's the first church. I wanted to read you. Let me finish First Corinthians 6. Go ahead. So good, Bishop. And he said, look, and since you're going to judge the world, can't you decide even these little things among yourselves? So what's he saying? Okay. Your present stewardship will determine your future responsibility. Come on, get this. You got to oh, get this. Wow. If you don't handle your business right here, he's saying, how are you going to be able to handle the business of the future in the eternal realm? Mm. That's what he's saying. It's heavy. First three, don't you? Realize that we will judge angels. Now, how are you gonna judge an angel? Come on, Bishop, go there. He's saying the way you judge angels is by first governing your own life mm -hmm. and then governing circumstances. He gives you the priority in Matthew uh, 6. He says, First, take the plank. I, I just read it, you may, you may be another place in Matthew. First, take the, the plank out of your own eye. Then you can see clearly to get the speck out of your brothers. He's not saying not judge. Come on, Bishop. He's saying your judgment, your seeing is obscure. 
mm. by your own lack of governing your own private life. So don't act like you see what's wrong in somebody else. He's saying, no, you got to first get that stuff right with yourself. Because wow. why? That just makes you promoter. Wow. You judge yourself, you judge your family, then you judge governmentally, the fivefold ministry, perfect the saints. But look, look here, let me tell you why you're going to judge angels. Because angels were made, you were born. Wow. wow. You are the real royal family. Which of the angels said he sit thou on thy right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool? Angels are so glad to serve you because you're the royal family. It's That's like so the people good. who are the servants of the royal families in England and other countries. They literally brag about, well, we've always we've served uh the King of England and uh oh. and the princes Revelation. for our generation now for over a hundred years. They're really bragging about it. Why? Because they're they're in the royal neighborhood. That's good. Angels so good. are not born again. They're always going to be. Are they not ministering spirits sent for them who are heirs of salvation? You're going to judge angels because you are born of the same substance is God is made of. This is too oh good. my goodness, man. I need another notebook. Yeah. Angels are made. They're servants. They'll always be glad to serve you. Aren't angels, cherubims, cherubims? They're always going to be glad to serve you because they're not of the genetic order. Wow. <laughs> so they're glad to have you tell them what to do when you grow up. Come on, Bishop. You're not mm. listening to your nonsense. It's the same thing about in the royal family. If you are immature, your own staff don't respect you. They have to do what you say, but not respectfully. So good. Whoa. That's too much. <laughs> and you got to do, you got to understand who you are, where you're going, what your responsibilities are going to be in the next world. And that's what he's, uh, he's talking to the most carnal church in the New Testament that he's written. And that's the church of Corinth, right here, Corinth. They're, 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 they're Greeks. But yet they're carnal, all kinds of stuff going on. You, you can read about it in the chapter before that, all kind of nonsense going on. Then the next chapter, he tells them, don't you know you're going to judge angels? And, he says, so should, and then verse 3, you're going to judge angels, so you should surely be able to resolve ordinary disputes in this life. Wow. He's talking about what you're going to do in the next life, but the premise of that is how you handle your business in this life. If you have legal disputes about such matters, why go ye to outside judges who are not respected by the church? See, again, he's trying to get you to see your level. I'm saying this to shame you. Isn't there anyone in all the church who's wise enough to decide these? But instead, one believer sues another right in front of unbelievers. So good. Man, and you got to read the rest of it. I can't. I got to go to another scripture just for a minute. So good. Please. Come on. In 2 Timothy, now here Paul comes to the end of his life. I like it better in the King James. So look what he says to Timothy now, but now look at it a little more closely. Okay. I charge thee, therefore, verse 1, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, look who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing at his kingdom. Now, whoa, that's a mouthful right there. That's more than a mouthful. In the Living Translation, he says it this way, I solemnly urge you in the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he comes to set up his kingdom. So what he's saying, he's not judging you now for condemnation. He's talking to Christians. He's judging you now for placement. Wow. Whoa. And that's what he's trying to bring Timothy into the consciousness of, man. You're going to be somewhere. I'm trying to get you straight in your mentality. See, now look, let me just say this to you. This is, this is strong stuff again. See, if you can't tolerate how long I've been talking, so good. don't even worry about it. Come on. You understand what I mean? I mean, look, <laughs> go look at, you know, have gun real travel or something. Go look mm -hmm. at a Western. It doesn't matter. 
See, this is not for you if you don't have an appetite for it. Wow. They mm -hmm. the See, I realize at some level, Derek Prince, I'm ghetto and gutter by background, right? So Derek Prince was somebody I really liked what he was saying. But he was he was boring, man, in the sense of being monotone and all this. But the revelations were exploding. So good. Mm -hmm. I bought everything he had. So let me bring something up to you right now. For every one of you who send to this ministry, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about to some money. I'm going to give you this, this manual. I mean, I got a book right now wow. called My Journey with God, The Arise and Shine Edition. Just done. I'm going to send you the e-version of it. You wow. go to wellingtonboone.com, absolutely free upon you giving Isaiah's ministry so much. I appreciate that, man. No, no. 400 pages. It's right, 391. 400 pages. Mm. Okay, so I want you to understand, this is a consecration journal. When it said, be holy, even as my father, this is a process-driven book. This is not just a read-through, it's a work-through. Wow, it's a work -through. Regent University, Joe Umidi, who's one of the vice presidents, talked to me about this being a part of the curriculum of the School of Theology. Mm. Now, the same book for Phoenix University of Theology, I was certified a PhD on the basis of the content of this book. There's a thousand bibliographies in here. And, okay? So this is what Thank you got. You so much, so Bishop. if I just tell you some of the stuff Thank that's you, in Bishop. here, when they ask me, how did I get like that? I mean, this, I got Finney right here. I'm looking at it. I put him in here. But the stuff that's amazing about this book is if I let you understand that is a 24-hour self-accountability journal. Mm, like, for example, that, the planned schedule and the actual schedule. So at 12 a.m., if you for 24 hours write down everything you do hour for hour, if you sleep four hours, you write it down. If you had a dream, you make a note about it. When you get up, if you prayed, how, when did you pray? How long did you pray? If you read so the scriptures, good. when did you read? If you went to work, where did you go to work? If you witnessed somebody about Jesus, who did you witness to? I mean, it's down. Look, you are writing this down. You're documenting your life hour by hour. Do you hear me? That is so good. Mm. So when you look back at it, this is not like the psycho babble journals that people do. I had a rough day today. I really <laughs> feel on, bad. Work was really hard. Come on. Oh, Christians really treated me bad. I'm not talking about psycho babble. I'm talking about an actual documentation of your life for a 24-hour period. Now, what this is, is a 30-day consecration journal. You do this every day for 30 straight days. But this is the benefit. When you look back over what you've written, nobody else has to see that. Mm, you like can that. now look at what kind of Christianity you are from outside of you being introspective. That is good. You can now see so who you good. are by looking at what you got. Now, I just quoted 1 Corinthians 11. If you judge yourself, now you can judge yourself. Mm -hmm. Other than that, you forget about how you talked to that person earlier. Yes. You don't think about the fact that you spent 15 minutes reading the Bible. You don't talk about it. You spent three minutes praying. You prayed on the way to work. But see, when you write all this down, now, when you conclusively think about it, you ask yourself this question. Do you think God is going to turn a world over into the hands of a Christian like that? Wow. Wow. <laughs> because God is going to give you rewards on what you actually become. Wow. So what you might do is you, you might be ignoring the kind of Christian you really are. But when you document so then I list on another part of it, other checklist, a personal daily ratings checklist. And I list 12 categories. I, I'm not going to go into it because uh, I'm getting, no, I'm working so on my good. clothes right now. This but it's so all good. in this free book I'm going to give to you, the e-version of it. So good. You got to go right now. But you got to say, I'm going to give this man some money. Give him some money. I appreciate you, Bishop. Okay. But this is real. Then today's expenses and money management. So what did you spend today? You mm. wrote that down. Then 
How did you serve God today? Did you write that down? Did so you serve? good. Now, I appreciate Bishop Hunt. I'll tell you, Isaiah, some of his people, they went out there and some of them, they had masks on, whatever. I got Michael right here. But they still served people, gave them food, made themselves available to make a difference for the broke, poor people. So good. They didn't go in the house and do what the governor says. Now, in some cities, you can still have church meetings. You just got to be six feet apart. Yeah. So why do you like the big churches decide not to do any? Mm. Oh, see, that, that's why I question whether you're scared or not. Mm. You got to stop that. You got See, fear, you got to challenge your fears. I mean, look, I really don't care whether you come together that way. But look, but we'll, how about having a coronavirus healing service? Come on, Bishop. And lay hands on every one of them. You know, John G. Lake did it with the, with the Come on. Bubonic Plague. Yep. They thought he was crazy. They thought you're insane. <laughs> he said, it'll never attach itself to me. And when they looked under the microscope at that Bubonic Plague touching his hand, it was dying under his hand. Wow. Mm. And you think you, you can't carry an anointing like that? You think you're not anointed like that? See, so you got to build up yourself. This is what the Bible says. Building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. You got to build yourself up beyond the fear of death or the fear of the coronavirus. You got to build yourself up to it. Now, yeah. don't run over there and lay hands on nobody and you ain't built up yourself. You 15 oh, minute sure. prayer, read the Bible every now and then. Forget it. You get in that house standing. <laughs> Keep that social distance. Come on. You serious Christian. You're not a serious Christian. And some of you people are right. Some of you pastors are right. Stay away from people because you're not consecrated. Wow. This is a consecration journal. I, 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 I teach you in here how to fast all night, do all night prayer. I teach you what to do hour by hour. So good. This is not this all night prayer meeting that some of you holiness charismatic churches have. You say we start this thing at nine and we all night prayer, we're ending at 12. That's not all night prayer. You stop it. Come on. Come on. No consecration in that. You know, all night. I'm about to donate to myself just to get this book, Bishop. This is incredible. <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah. So, you know, so I got it in here about the people who did this. William Wilbur, I got it in. Ludwig Van Zinzendorf, then the 100 Year Revival. I, I got this stuff in here. Richard Allen, you know, I mean, I got these people in here. Mm. You know, I got, I, and then I have some original art of the picture of these people, sketches of them in here. I got Susanna Wesley in here, the mother John and Charles Wesley, and, you know, her principles and David Brainerd and Jonathan Edwards and all this, all in wow. this book right here. So I, this is a resource book. You know what? You, I'm just saying, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know what else to say to you. So good, Bishop. Get this thing. It's the e-version. Miss Ellenwood, my editor, is, is right now viewing this. She has set it up because she, she didn't know I was going to do this, but she's ready for it. Come on, Bishop. Mm -hmm. And then Isaiah, those people that send you, once you get it, and if you need, get you know, you got an access to me and, of course, Miss Ellenwood and all this. So get it, and then... Go ahead and start giving it away. Yeah, Bishop, if you send it Give to me, e I can send away. it to all, I can send the e-version to everyone that's given here on PayPal and then everyone that's giving on the website as well. There you go. I appreciate that. Words, you just heard that. And, you just heard and guys, that's, the, first, that's the first link is PayPal. The second link where it says monthly partnership, you can give with any major credit card. You do not have to do monthly there. And also, I know a couple of people have signed up monthly. I'll, we'll be giving you that as well. So if you signed up monthly, you're going to also get the book. I'm Bishop. I'm excited because I think a lot of people, as Paul said, think they're more spiritual than they really are. So we think about, you know, we think we look at our prayer life and we say, man, I have a powerful prayer life. But as you said, if we look back on our prayer life and we realize the only time we prayed was for our breakfast and then that before bed we pray no one would rob us and you know break into our house at night but i think as you're talking about you know bishop so, some people some people need bishop they need to write it down they need to log the time spent in prayer they need to log who have i witnessed to you ask so many nominal believers if you, have you witnessed to anybody this year and the majority of them are going to tell you i don't witness i don't pray i don't cast out demons i don't heal the sick i don't do what the bible calls the basic 
basic things of the faith. And I thought about, as you were talking, Bishop, how Paul says in the last days, they'll have a form of godliness, but they will deny, and guys, this is word for word in your Bible. They will deny the very power that can make them like God, that God has made us. This is our defining moment. This is what we've been waiting for. We've been waiting for the world to come to us and say, do you have the answer for this? Do you, do you have the power to lay hands on the sick? Do you have the power to prophesy? And I think I'm not talking about conspiracy. I'm talking about prophecy. I think we need those people to raise up now as the defining moment in the church where we're not going to shrink back, but we're going to raise up and we're going to declare an all out war over every demonic assignment, every demonic power, every prince of power, every ruler of darkness, every spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. We've been given all power and all authority, as you said. And a lot of people, even the chat, Bishop, the whole time you've been talking, we've had over 2,500 comments so far. And a lot of these people are saying, where has this been? I've never heard this. (laughs) But here's Bishop. Here's what I want to say. The fact that many of us have never heard this type of preaching, never heard this type of teaching, it shows where we are in the body of Christ. It shows the lack of prayer on behalf of the leaders, on behalf of the pastors. There is a lack of prayer, a lack of encounter, a lack of devotion life so that we're not in, we're not hearing what is the spirit saying to the church. Guys, listen. This is what the spirit is saying to the church right now. This is what God yeah. is saying. This is not a revelation from 10 years ago. This is not this is not some God off sermon central. This is not sermonspice.com. This is not uh, yeah. recycled from YouTube. This is fresh revelation. This is what the spirit is saying right now to the body of Christ. And I love what Bishop Bay said, listen, if you can't handle this, that we've gone two hours, if you can't handle how deep this has gone, this is not for you. There's a thousand people no, live streaming right. right now with some watered down message, with some soft message that you can go listen to that'll just get the chill bumps yeah. going on your back, some tickle me Elmo sermon. But this is for those that are saying, God, I am hungry for revival. I'm hungry to Come know on. you. I'm hungry to encounter you. And so, man, yeah. Bishop, this is just... This This is good stuff, Bishop. I'm getting challenged. I know my people in the chat, my followers, I have linked Bishop's page as well. Every everything that we're talking about and preaching on, he's going live all the time. He's teaching on this stuff all the time. What is God saying? He has countless books. He has this 400 page devotional. And so, guys, if you're hungry for this, you need to follow his page more than anything. And I'm going to read off later after I let him off. I'm going to read off all the donations so I don't have to hold him for that. Guys, anyone that donates tonight, he just said it. I didn't know he was going to do this. This is a major blessing to our ministry, and I know tons of you are giving right now. We are going to be giving all of you this 400-page book. I'm going to be reading it. I'm going to be going through it. I'm going to print out that schedule that you have because I want to go deeper. I want to know more. This is for the hungry. This is for those that want to go deep. This is for those that say, God, I want more. I'm not satisfied with baby Christianity kicking around in the kiddie pool of Christianity, but I want the deep things of God. This is what you're getting, guys. I'm telling you, there is no Nobody out there, guys, like this, preaching this. This Bishop Boone is a gift. When Paul says gifts to the body of Christ, Bishop Wellington Boone is a gift. This is why we're, me and Nino, are so proud to call him our bishop, proud to call him our spiritual father, because this is the yeah. level that he's walking. This is not baby stuff. Come on. This is not play around stuff. This is deep stuff. Yep. And so, Bishop, I really, really appreciate you doing that tonight. So, so as I let me give two more go scriptures. Ahead. Go ahead, Bishop. There's no rush. Just about the next world again. Yes, I just want to yes, take no a, rush. just for a minute into the next world to let them see. The other thing is, it's not that I had a vision. I went to heaven. I saw heaven. I'm not, you can't build your life on somebody else's experience with God, mm, wow. but you can build it on the wow. scripture. So let me just, as I was reading this passage in 2 Timothy, look what Paul said to Timothy. Now, this is what he's leaving in. And when he, when he, when he, when he's giving him his final word, he says, verse two of second Timothy four, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure Mm. sound doctrine, but after Mm. their own lust, shall they heed to themselves teaching, having itching ears. And that you, you, you clearly see that. What? And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned into fables. Uh, I just won't even comment on that. It's right there. Read it in another version. It'll help you. But watch thou in all things. Look, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and make full proof of your ministry. 
Mm -hmm. So now look at this now. Now he's going to transition and talk to him about the next world. For I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Now here is somebody that's getting ready to embrace death. Death is a portal into the next world. You are not going to even, you won't be able to measure what happens between your being alive in this world wow. and being in the heavens. The way the scripture says it is to be absent from the body, is to be present with the Lord. Wow. Boom. You can't, there's no measurable way that in, in a human construct can you define how long that takes. Death is a portal into that dimension. The death to the flesh also gets you into that dimension. Mm. But the final portal is when you literally die. But Christians, it is you should be embracing it. So look at what Paul's doing. So he's embraced it. So he says this, watch. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. So he's about to be martyred. But look what he says. Now, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Now, wait a minute now. How do you know you're going to get a crown? How? Who told you that? Where is that? This is where now he's speaking to a responsibility. So you think that what he's talking about is God is just going to like put a crown on his head and he's going to like be what? He's going to have a throne. What's he going to do? Just wear a crown. Or is that a responsibility for a placement? Mm. Mm. So good. Wow. And that's oh really goodness. what he's talking about, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day. So he knew that the challenges of this life isn't worthy of the rewards of the next. So when you ask God, what are the rewards of the next world? And what would you like? Some people ask, well, is it, I'm going to be able to have my dogs there. Am I, could I play golf? Can I play, you know, what am I going to get? And then there's some people that say, I can't wait to get in my mansion. They think that Jesus came down, died, crucified, was buried, was resurrected on the third day, so he can give them a house? <laughs> Come on, You think Bishop. John 14 is so that Jesus did all that so he can give you a house in the next world? Come on. He's talking about your measure of rule, your metron, your dwelling, what you're going to be over. That's what he's talking about. But here he gets clearer with it. Watch. He says, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What? Wow. You're saying that you're not only going to get a crown, but if numbers of people are, are bidding him to come, or are excited about dying, you mean there's a crown waiting for them too? Well, well, let me just ask you to turn to Matthew 19 with me for a minute. Just for a minute. Because a crown without subjects wow. mm. or a throne mm. is just an ornament. It's a hat. Wow. So you think that he did all of that to get a hat? To wear something on his head? It's not, so even, it's not even talking about something physical. Come on, Bishop. He's talking about a responsibility. And look what he says here. Now watch. Matthew 19, verse 27. Reading the Living Translation for this. Then Peter said to him, we've given up everything to follow you. Wow. And then he asked them a specific question. What will we get? Wow, come on, Bishop. Come on. Now what? Jesus replied, I assure you that when the world is made new. So what? So Peter asked him, by our devotion, giving up everything, what should we get? Jesus never rebukes him for asking what's going to be the benefit so of a surrendered good. life. Wow. Wow. So Jesus immediately takes him to the next world. Gosh. Whoa. This is too good. Let, let me just read it in the, in the King James, since you asked, because I like the way, I like the <laughs> language on. of it in the, in the King James, because I'm probably used to it. So I'm reading 1928. I'm reading, I'm reading it. So he says this. So let's see. What? 
19, where am I? Matthew, Matthew yeah. Yeah, 19, 20. He says, and Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration. Mm. Whoa. Wow. What? Now he takes them straight to that whole matter of everything. The earth is going to be purified by fire. The mm. elements are going to be burned with fervent heat. You're not going to be exposed to that. All it's going to do is bring out your level. And the Son of Man, watch, and the Son of Man sits upon his glorious throne. You who have been my followers will also sit on 12 thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now you see that he's not only talking about crowns, he's talking about thrones. Wow. He says, I'm not only going to get mine, but you who have followed me at this level of total giving up everything is going to also have a throne. And Paul says, with that throne is going to be a crown. Mm. Oh. <laughs> you are living this life with eternity in view. You're living this life for the next life. There is no a reward you can get from the earth that will ever satisfy your level. Man, wow. Get all the gold, get all the silver, get a big house, get a nice, look, all of that. The reason it's not worthy of you is because it is not going to go where you're going to go. Oh, it doesn't come qualify. On. Come on, Bishop. Where you're going to go, something in the next world is being made ready. For you. Mm. So Jesus goes on and says, to him, and he says, judging the 12 tribes of Israel, and that's that thing. Remember that again? So I read in 1 Corinthians 6, he said, you're going to judge the world. You're going to judge angels. Now he's saying to them, he says, you're going to judge tribes. He tells the disciples wow. that. <laughs> and everyone who has given up, now look at this. Houses and brothers and sisters and fathers, mothers, children, property, for my sake, will receive a hundred times as much in return and will inherit eternal life. Now, you can interpret eternal life means eternal living. In other words, when you give up living on the basis of fleshly knowledge, God then gives you the understanding of how to live on the eternal knowledge that you're gaining. Wow. The whole life is about how to live at the level that God is. So good. Look, you can go to a good college, you can handle the business. You go to MIT, look, one, MIT, Wharton, Harvard, one, two, three in terms of business schools every year. They, 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 they fluctuate in terms of who? Stanford may get in there since you're over in California in the top five category, you understand? Mm -hmm. But look, what he's saying. So if you want to handle your business in the earth, just get a good education, go to a good school. Wow, Bishop. But to handle the business of heaven, you got to be schooled by the Holy Ghost. Come on. Wow. And you got to learn before you get there. But this is what you do when you, get, when you go to education. You go to those good schools. You get your education before you get your place. You got to learn about heaven before you go there. Come on. Not just how to get there. You've been morning and you're already going there. So when you start praying, you got to ask God for something beyond the stuff that happens in the earth. Mm -hmm. You got to ask God to teach you about the stuff that's going to happen in the forever dimension. Come on, Bishop. Ask him, how are you going to judge angels? Yes, sir. But what you'll find if you go to another place, which I'm not going to go there anymore, too. He says, you're going to sit at my table. So evidently that he's going to teach the disciples because he's not going to feed them physical food, not natural food. Come They're already on. eternal beings. Mm. At my table, I'm going to give you the stuff that you need to have. Wow. But not every, only disciples are going to be at that table. Wow. So good, Bishop. See? So... And a hundred times as much, he's just doing a comparative analogy, see. 
He's not talking about anything natural. And many who are the greatest now, look at this, will be the least important then. Well, wait a minute. Jesus, Paul, Peter asked you, what should we get? How does that relate to the next world? So he explains in verse 30, but many who are the greatest now, so that's now right now, Mm -hmm. will be the least then. So he takes them all the way to the next world. He's actually saying, if you know how to condescend and not vie for position, won't fame, won't position, won't money, won't prestige. He says, if you don't go after that now, what you're going to get then is going to be a hundred times better. Wow. Wow. That's what he's saying. But he says, if you'll be least now, you'll be greatest then. When is the then? It's the regeneration, it's the whole next world. So he's telling you how to function to be able to be competent for the next world. So good. You got to develop then a next world mentality. So good, Bishop. But what are the questions you're asking God? What are the questions you're asking? Like, for example, okay, watch. Let me just give you a couple. Since you're asking. Yes, yes. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Since you're asking, okay? Like, for example, Lord, what? is the dominating language in the next world. Mm. Is there a language in the next world? Whose language? Is it Spanish? What? What is it? English? Is it Hebrew? What's the language? What language, when God reveals to you things uh, prophetically, what language is that? Wow. <laughs> 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 no one's going to sleep tonight after this. Everyone's going to be up at night is thinking he, about this. In other words, when God said, let us make man, he already existed. He existed before language. That's mm -hmm. why there's no language, no matter how many words, could actually define God. You can't define his knowledge. You can't define his power. You can't define his goodness. You can't define his love. You can't define his holiness. Words themselves are limited. Wow. He pre-existed before there were words. Paul said, I was in the bosom of the Father before the world was. So good. He says, when I was caught up in the third heavens, he says there were words that could not be uttered. Why? Because there was no words for that level. That is revealed mm. stuff. By the time you say it in words, the level of it is reduced. Think of the greatest weapon you can think of right now, the greatest weapon, nuclear bombs, all of that. You think that's greater than faith? Come on, Bishop. No, no, let's, let's just think about it. Is it ain't greater than faith? It, do you think that all the charities, St. Jude's charity, you think that that demonstrates the love that God is? God is love. He creates by his love. He judges by his holiness. Now, compare God's holiness to anything you could think of. See, language cannot define God. God has to reveal himself. Revelation is a gem. Revelation is not a language. Revelation is the unveiling. It's a just knowing. Adam didn't have to think to know before he sinned. He just knew. Wow. He never would have been trained. He never had to, to think. He, he, he never had to measure his words. He was made in the image of God. God didn't have to do any of that. Now Jesus comes back and tells you that I do always those things that please my Father. Paul then tells us to be imitators of God. How do you know that? You mean... Okay, what's the level? Imitate God? Wow. So then, can I make another world? So what's the measure of the imitation? Come on, Bishop. See, we think imitation is laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, because that's the measure of what we know in a human construct. But if you take it to eternity, now you're talking about immeasurable stuff. So good. That's what we're made of. We're made of the immeasurable, the undefinable. Now, okay, but look, 
define the level of devotion of the strongest Christian you know. Go ahead, put it in the word. That's good. <laughs> Cannot define it. Because one, you don't know it. There's no word. Define my prayer time when I spend hours in the word, reading to the sense that I can't focus on the words any longer. Sure. My eyesight gets so bleary being in the word, I can't see the words. I put on my glasses like I got on now, and it's just, it's too bleary. I've been in it too long for my eyes to... Mm. Wow. And it's the same thing with prayer in all these areas. You are an undefinable being. That's why God does not even know. You don't even know your name in it. Only God knows that. Wow. You are some offshoot of the genetic order of the creator himself. You are amazing. You are undefeatable. You already are victorious in every area of your life. There is no real match for you. And you're going to inherit what the Father gave to the Son. The Son is giving it to the saints. Come on. Worlds without end. You'll travel by a speed that can't be measured by, measured by anything you know. Because that's the Almighty. You'll multitask like God is right here in Christ with us right now. He can be a burning bush and still be in the heavens and have the seraphim, seraphim, worship. So good. He can hear every prayer that's made at the same time with millions of people praying and not be challenged by it. He can hold the devil and demons and evil spirits at bay. And you are made of that. Wow. Man. So this is just my little talk to you tonight. So I, I want to just pray a prayer. Yes, just, yes, Just with yes. you for a minute. Yes. And just say to you that, one, I, I love you. I'm just telling you, there, there are people. Isaiah is exactly right. He is in the midst of all this stuff going on. Uh, there are people being set aside sanctified where before the job their situation their circumstance their business all kept them but now god is pulling you to himself he knew you'd be good ground for this time mm. now i've met people that said my kids are driving me insane i gotta get <laughs> out of there Come on. you know oh my god eight year old i got a two year old i mean a six year old and they are they You're don't stop they're they're, jumping, they're running they're not. oh my god see because you didn't know that that's your world. Mm. Whatever those kids are is you. Mm. That's your environment. You chose what's there. You chose the wife. You wanted the children. All the other stuff that's in there, if you didn't choose the furniture, you allowed it, the color, your coat of arms, all that. You did, you did all this shit. I'm just saying you're authorized to do it like nobody else is there. Come on. Because there's only one of you. So God good. did not create average. Come on. All the mediocre part and things you don't like about yourself, don't sweat it. It's not permanent. Things that you don't do great, it's not. You may not even, shouldn't even be focusing on that. There are things you do great that he's saying, I want more of that. Mm. Mm. You think I, don't you think I knew who you were when I chose you? Just focus on me. That's who it's all about. So good. I'm sure. saying to you in the name of the Lord Jesus now, you, Lord. rise up large in the things of God. All of you, under the sound of my voice, this is your, this is your hour. Don't let the negative voices try to define your measure of rule. You are born of God. You are living because God determined you would be living in this generation, and you're not dead yet because God is finished with you yet. You're not going to die until God is finished. You are being formed and shaped for an assignment in the next world. And you are being trained how to govern from your personal life to your family, to the, your church position, to the positions in government, to the positions out in the marketplace. 
You are an amazing leader. You're being developed in, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And every born again believer that's joined with me in this prayer, I command acceleration to come to you in the name of the Lord. Every oppressive spirit that tries to keep you bound mm -hmm. has no real authority over you. And in the name of the Lord Jesus, I'm saying to you, just rise up in the glory of God and the devil's attachment to you will fall away. As you grow and pray in the spirit and as you read the word, all of your environment is changed, the glory in Jesus' name. The corona is a misnomer. It means the crown. The devil's trying to steal your crown with the virus. The devil is a liar. The glow around the sun, the glow around the, the, the moon, that's the light, that's the glow, that's the corona. It's called the corona. But when the, the devil's children, they just tried to use their intellect and they, they looked in a microscope and they saw that around that virus was a crown. They called it a corona, but it's a misnomer. That's your crown. The crown that you carry is not a virus. The crown that you carry is an anointing from God. Don't let the devil steal your glory. He's going to return for a glorious church. That's the, that's, the, that's the manifestation. That's the power of God. He's returning for you. He's coming to get you. But before he does, amazement is about to happen. Not only to you, but through you. Mm. He's not looking to someone else. You say, Lord, I, I, I will be the one you can use. I will make myself available at the next level. I will be the one that will shake the earth. I'll take revival to a nation. I'll awaken those, those presidents of countries that, that have their people in bondage. I will be the sent one in this generation like the early apostles. Use me, Lord. I will not bring shame to you. Mm -hmm. And Holy Spirit, I'm so sorry. I've ignored you. I've only wanted to use you for amazement, not just come to you and fellowship with you in private. Mm -hmm. Ask me, ask you to show me the Father. Show me how things work in the eternal world. You are ordained to know those things. It's my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God did not create stupid. You are called to be that wise saint that God can use in this day. I leave my blessings upon you. I thank God for those sons of thunder over there. And you know, Isaiah and all that whole family. They're being raised up in the midst of darkness, but they're the light that shines. And all of you who are on this line now looking, they can withstand, they can stay in here over two hours with me. It's not cheap grace. There's something that's happening. The transformation, be bold. Take your stand. Declare your victory. Be that great one that God's called you to be. Just don't take his glory for it. Just know it's God. Ask God to forgive you for things you spoke about the circumstances and not about the destiny. That God continue to form you and shape you into the amazement that you are. Others will see your glory and God will get them. God bless you. Continue people to go to wellingtonboo.com or Isaiah will get this information from Cynthia Elderwood, she's looking at you right now, and Matthew, and hey, Malik, and all these guys, you know, ask for you can have anything from me. I'm your dad. Of course you can. Get anything you want. So Isaiah, please. Yes, Bishop. Get this stuff out to the people. I'm giving it to them absolutely free. Thank you so much, Bishop. And I just love you. I can't you, wait. Bishop. Let me come back over there. Look, now I'm the type. I come back over there while the thing is going on. Oh, Bishop, come on, <laughs> get out of here! Come on, not gonna come around you and catch nothing. 
I get nothing. You got the cleanness. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> and continue to reach the world this way. That's right. Thank you, you so you're much, right Bishop. You're right on top of it. You should do this. And you're right to do it. And God bless you. Thank man. you, Thank guys. You for guys I, linked his we I linked his website in the comments. Please, guys, go follow his page. If you follow his yeah. Facebook page, you can see everything that they're doing. They're live streaming. They're posting his books. All of his links are on his Facebook page. So please... Follow the Facebook page. I'll, as he said tonight, he's given a 400-page devotional for everyone that gives tonight. So if you gave through my mm -hmm. website, if you gave through Venmo, if you gave through the PayPal, I will send you the copy. Um, Mrs. Ellenwood will send it to me, and I'll send it to every PayPal email. Okay. So whatever your email is on your PayPal, I will send you that copy. Thank you so much, Bishop. We appreciate We love you. We'd love to have you Thank on you, again, Bishop. Bishop. That was amazing. Hey, man, I love you guys. You know it. You know I love you. Now, look. That's what I love is just being with you and seeing how I'm using you. Look, I get bragging about you. You could never say too many things about what God is doing with you. Come on. When you get my age, you love hearing about mm, what God is doing right. through you. So look, please tell me it all. I love hearing about you. I'll be blowing up your phone use. then. <laughs> I'll Amen. be blowing up your phone. Bishop, we love you. Thank you so much for being on here tonight. Love you, Bishop. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, good night, Bishop. Okay, Thank bless. you so much. See God bless. Time. Thank you. Wow, wow, wow. What do we say, guys? That was incredible. Everyone in the chat right now is saying it felt like it went by in a minute. It felt like that to me. We're going to give away, guys. Listen, don't log off. We are going to give away, for our giveaway tonight, three more copies of this 400-page devotional. Okay, so if you didn't donate and you want to win this devotional, our giveaway tonight will be three of those devotionals. Bishop said I can give these to who I want to give them to, so we're going to give away this 400 page. So tonight is the night to win, guys. Tonight is the night. If you want to give and you haven't given yet, this is a great time to do it. People are still giving right now. Let me read through a bunch of these as they're going off still. Let me see if I can get this. Okay. All right. We got a bunch of people still giving here. As you can see, them popping up as well. Thank you so much. Norris Johnson, I'm going to read these quick, guys, and then we're going to do the giveaway. So don't get off. We're going to do the giveaway. We're going to give away three more copies. I'm excited to get this copy myself. I know, guys, we're going to have to watch this back. I'm telling you, Bishop Boone is no joke. There's nobody like him. He is a man of God, and he's on a whole nother level. I'm telling you, I've been around for 10 years, man of God all over the country, every name you can think of, and there is nobody like our Bishop Wellington Boone. He is incredible, okay? Bishop Malik, great seeing you in the chat. Love you so much, Bishop Matthew Malik. Okay. Let me read through those donations, and then I'm going to do our giveaway, okay? Our Bible trivia giveaway. If you want to win this book, do not leave. We are doing Bible trivia giveaway still, okay? All right, Norris Johnson, I'm going to read all these donations. Thank you so much. Noel Harris said, God bless. Yvonne, Andrew Chu, thank you. Anonymous said, blessings. Ernie Magdaleno, um, Jasmine said, keep spreading that fire. Thank you, Jasmine. Missionary Church at Nork. Um, Anonymous, Zadie, Ed Craft. Jim said, thank you, men of God. God bless you. Um, Aira, sorry if I didn't pronounce that right, said, God bless your ministry. Anonymous said, thank you for your ministry. Bless your family. Thank you for the quality guests that you keep having on. I'm learning so much. Thank you so much for that. Vanessa Shoebridge said, thank you for blessing me in my walk. Jim said, praise God. Thank you, Jim, for another donation. Um, Sailors t donated. Thank you so much, Sailors. Ethan Ortega, thank you for the donation. Rita, Carl. Danette Diaz said, God bless your ministry. Thank you so much. Nicole and the Acevedo family said, so good. Love you guys. Kylie Kennedy, thank you so much for that donation. Said, so blessed from this message. I'm telling you guys, people are getting rocked. This was such a crazy, powerful message. Incredible. Thank you, Pastor Deb. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Lori Victor, thank you for that donation. Yvonne said, this donation is for Alicia Young in the chat. Can you please send her the book? Yes, Alicia, message me and your email and I will send you the book. Thank you, Yvonne, for that donation. Sherry Curtis Met Medellin, um, Julie said, I'm blown away. I've never heard this preach before. Thank you, Isaiah, Nico, and Bishop Boone. Thank you so much, Julie GT. Joel, um, Margie, thank you so much. 